a very happy Easter to you. There's been a lot of prayer going on this week, 24 hours a day, each day in fact we have prayed and God has responded. We will be sharing the images, visions and words people have discerned over these coming weeks and let's keep praying. The clergy team will be taking some time off over the next couple of weeks, but one of us will always be here for you if you need to get in touch. So please don't hesitate to do so. Next Sunday, in-person services will be gradually restarting. So do look at our website to find out more information. And for now, these online services will be continuing as well. But now I'm going to hand over to Simon, who's going to lead our time together, and Steve, who's going to be sharing his thoughts on the profound meaning of this day. We will be joining with musicians from across the team and with friends from Holy Trinity Stroud, who will be reading and leading us in prayer. Hello and a very happy Easter to you. Let me start by lighting our Easter candle. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age for ever and ever. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and our minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory 
Glory to Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Christ Jesus. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah. Amen. So the collect for today, the special prayer for Easter Sunday. God of glory, by the raising of your son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope for a new day has dawned and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. A reading from Acts, chapter 10, verse 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that he rose again, when he rose again. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day when he rose again, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day when he rose again. This is the day, this is the day when the Spirit came, when the Spirit came. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day when the Spirit came, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day when the Spirit came. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle them in the fire of your love. Alleluia. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where he they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings were lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that he had laid on Jesus' head was not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in the place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she went, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she, had, when she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Hebrew, Rabbinai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I must send him to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Madeline went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Happy Easter. I'm really glad Lent's over. This Lent, uh, in order not to be outdone by my family, I decided to emulate what some Buddhist monks do and give up eating between noon and sunrise the next day. Uh, this is meant to lead to a greater sense of prayerfulness and preparedness for meditation, but in fact, it just left me yearning for a massive bag of crisps every evening. So, I think the main thing I'm looking forward to doing this Easter is uh, sitting down in front of line, in of line of Duty at nine o'clock with an enormous bag of crisps all to myself. And that to me will be the, uh, the true joy to be found uh, this Easter day. I hope your Lent's been good. Um, of course, Lent is really not just about giving up stuff, but it's about, it is a bit about letting go and about entering into God's space rather than our own space. And so we've been hopefully moving towards God through Lent, through Good Friday. And uh, now we found our, find ourselves with Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome. We find ourselves staring in uh, fear and amazement at the empty tomb this Easter morning. And when they're staring at the uh, empty tomb, I find their reaction so relatable, not because they're encountering a miracle, but because they're encountering the possibility of reality. You see, I think resurrection is the most natural thing in the world. It's an inevitable consequence of a life that's lived fully in communion with God. 
Because how could a life that's lived each moment in the eternal come to an end? So in his resurrection, Christ reveals to us the boundless freedom of a life that's lived fully. A life where we can say, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Now that path to resurrection leads through crucifixion, as we're well aware of. And it's with that uh, thought that we encounter, or I want to encourage you to think about, the first of the great freedoms that we are offered in resurrection living. It's the freedom to let go of our narrow self-interest and rediscover our divine image. But like a wild animal that's been kept too long in a cage, we are fearful of stepping away from our self-imprisoned refuges and of entering into what Moltmann calls the wide open space of God's joy. Christ embraced that possibility of letting go of the self in the ultimate way. Christ was trusting that he would step into a much greater way of being. Secondly, the resurrection is also the freedom to participate in God's creative energies. In resurrection, we can discern the spirit of God revealing to us new ways into hope. In John 16, 13, it says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide us into all truth. So with resurrection, we can discover new ways to rebuild and rediscover community. Pope Francis, in his book, Let Us Dream, challenges us to discern the spirit, to discern the promptings of the risen Christ as we recreate society during and post this time of COVID. And we're invited to rediscover a solidarity with the poor and the oppressed. But not only that, also to practice a subsidiarity that lets go of our centralized power and our control and enables new life and community to develop from the margins and the marginalized. True solidarity and subsidiarity are an invitation to join with Christ in his crucifixion so as to experience the joys of the resurrection. Because other people in my community, other people who surround us are not a limit on my freedom. They are an extension of it. In fact, I would say other people are a necessary condition for my own freedom. So I wonder if we ourselves this Easter day can become centers of freedom and creativity. Can we allow ourselves to be centers of a new hope that rebuilds around the margins and not from the center? But letting go, crucifixion, resurrection is a risk. We were God's greatest risk. Travelling through the loss and the death of Lent and of Good Friday, we, as I mentioned earlier, we find ourselves outside the empty tomb with Mary, Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome. We're staring fearfully into the possibility of a life lived in freedom. A freedom that is unimaginably spacious, creative and joyous. And in that freedom, we will encounter the possibility of union with God and with each other in a true community. In Mandalay, Myanmar, a few weeks ago, there was a photo of a nun knelt prayerfully in front of armed police, requesting that they shoot her or arrest her rather than continue their pursuit of youthful protesters against the regime. A couple of weeks ago on Clapham Common, we saw photos of women facing arrest as they campaigned for safer streets for all. In Yemen, 
Mohammed Tarek and Ahmed Fuad al Yousefi were kidnapped and killed whilst delivering humanitarian aid to that poorest country in the world. The joy of this Easter day and the joy of resurrection is that we are now free to join with them and countless others in living lives of solidarity, of creativity and of hope. We are now free to let go of our old selves and rise anew with Christ, in Christ and with the risen Christ. Happy Easter. See what a morning, gloriously bright, with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Light as the angels announce Christ is risen. See God's salvation plan wrought with love, born in pain, paid in sacrifice. Fulfilled in Christ the man, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. Stirring hope, bringing peace to us We'll sound till he appears For he lives, Christ is risen from the dead One with the Father, ancient of days Through the Spirit, who close faith with certainty The King, crowned with power and authority, and we are raised with Him. Death is dead, love was won, Christ is conquered, and we shall reign with Him. For He lives, Christ is risen from the dead. are raised with him death is dead love has won christ has conquered and we shall reign with him for he lives christ is risen from the dead And so to our profession of faith, what we believe. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
we pray to Jesus who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us, accept our prayers, and be with us always. Amen. And we conclude our prayers by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
and so to the blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those whom you love now and always. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you.